What is happening guys, Cowboy here, and welcome to my new Odachi build, the Obsidian Blade. So the number one comment on the other video was that a lot of people were upset that we were locked in at Sea Agility. A lot of people wanted to be faster, uh, whether it was through a heavier investment in stamina or lighter gear. And so I wanted to put together a new Odachi build and see just what I could do if I took a heavy focus on stamina and looked around synergies with that. And today, oh man, you want to talk about an upgrade? This is an upgrade. So the first thing we have here is Futsuno Miyatama. This is a unique lightning imbue Odachi. Uh, you can farm the smithing text for this off the final boss, but I would consider this to be the base weapon for this build. Now you could use any Odachi you want with this build as long as you're using lightning paper to help get that lightning damage up, but this is a great choice because it's going to come with lightning already on the blade, and that way we can focus on our other stats, which as you see we have attack bonus strength, we have active skill break, we have increased attack on Moonlit Snow, active skill key damage, and then shock accumulation, and lastly a delicious inheritable giving us life drain on active skill. So as you can probably guess, we have a big focus around skill damage with this build. Now, as for the rest of the gear, we're actually going to be running the full Samurai from Dark Lands set. Now, what's interesting about this set is we get some life drain on lightning attack, which we have a bunch of that going out. We get a massive attack bonus based off of our stamina, which is actually going to be a bigger attack bonus than what we got from the Taranashi set. And perhaps the most important thing, we get a rage duration increase of 30%. Now what's neat about Rage is we can use the Rage ability with the Axe and get that buff up and then use it with Odachi. In fact, you can do this with almost any weapon, but Odachi, with the fact that we're doing a skill-based build and so we're not worried about our key consumption as much, we have some excellent synergy here and it's going to allow us to throw out a Moonlit Snow that hits like an absolute truck. As for our ranged weapons, we're of course going with a... Uh, just set ones warrior of the west golden boy if you want more bow damage alternatively you could of course work in a uh, raven wing rifle here to get a life drain on bullseye effect it's just whatever you'd prefer so for the gear obviously we are going straight obsidian gear and i just got this together so i don't even have this thing tempered out to how good it could be you can see the stats i have on my gear right now are very very basic we haven't even taken like a focus or or any time really to min max these stats to see just how crazy this could be and even without doing that this build is already ridiculous but for things that you would want to look for elemental damage taken while guarding is obviously going to be a big one ideally you'd want to find gloves that have inheritable attack and move that onto every piece of your gear outside of that things like tenacity uh, things like faster winter recovery, all that stuff is going to be great perks to have on this gear. Now, even though this is a full heavy set, it's actually on the lighter end for heavy sets. So even though everything is heavy, we are at 65.5% weight, putting us into the B agility category. Obviously, you're going to want to have a Yasikani Magatama just to reduce the set requirements so that you can get the full seven piece bonus without running the star cutter sword and on top of that on your yasakani you're going to want to roll a lightning damage increase this is just going to have even more synergy with the build as for your secondary accessory you can run whatever you'd like i went with a comb just to help with the emrita gauge charge uh, but some main things to look for you'll notice i have shock accumulation on both of my accessories and then beyond that just go for things that you find appealing for a tanky style build in my case elemental damage taken key and life as for ninjutsu the only thing we're bringing along is a quick change scroll and some tiger running scrolls uh, as for our Omyo, Barrier Talismans to help offset the extra key we're going to be spending, and then Weakness Talismans just to further debuff the enemy and ramp up our damage even more. Now, as for our Guardian Spirit, we're still going to be running the Atlas Bear. This is just a very solid choice here because we have the faster winded recovery built in already. We have a damage bonus when we're low on key, which synergizes with the fact that we're going to have Rage up, and we have a melee damage boost. As for our Soul Cores, we're still going to want a Namahage. The melee damage versus zero key enemy is going to really help against Yokai as we burn their key on down. After that, we're going to pick up a Magatsu Warrior due to the active skill damage and the anima charge bonus on cumulative damage. So we're charging off of both our attacks and our guard. And then lastly, a Thunderstorm Oni B Core. This is just going to ramp our elemental damage up even further and allow us to fully enchant our blade with lightning for maximum destruction potential. Now, as for the secondary Guardian Spirit, there are a couple choices you could go for. Uh, my personal recommendation is going to be Ame no Mitori. This is going to give us an inheritable uh, of 10% lightning damage, and then, of course, the extra 5% lightning damage we get from the combo of Atlas Bear. So an extra 15% we're picking up there. Um, moving on into the skills. 
Now, perhaps the most important skill to this build is going to be my favorite skill in the Odachi tree, and that is going to be Moonlit Snow. We're going to be using this in high stance to absolutely decimate enemies. On top of that, we went ahead and farmed up the unique skill from the Odachi Ball, Swirling Snow. This just allows us to apply our elemental effect very easily. It is going to cost a lot of key, especially with a build focused around rage, but this thing does so much damage that most things are going to be dead before we actually run out of key. Uh, beyond that, obviously, you're going to want to pick up Relentless, boost your key further, bonus damage against humans. Uh, I like Twin or Devastating Rush is in my low stance. All the other stances, we're going to be using Swirling sl Snow. Uh, twin Moons to end our high stance combo. We're not going to even be doing that many combos. We're going to be having a big, big focus with this build uh, around putting out those skills. So the rest of the skills, it's really up to you what you pick up. But just to take a look at the tree here, you know, kind of what we went for. Uh, in general, I'm going to be going for Sunset Breeze Heaven and Waking Winds Heaven just to keep putting myself into high stance to dump out those big, beefy Moonlit Snow nukes. Uh, moving on from there into the skill customization category. Since Moonlit Snow is going to be our heaviest hitter, we're going to be giving this the damage bonus based on strength. We're also going to be doing the damage bonus based on stamina over on Swirling Snow to just further amplify this. And then over on Ground Quake, we have put the... Uh, oh, have Mercenary Strike some uh, farming uh, but i would suggest masterful slice here ground quake already does a ton of key damage and masterful slice is just going to further amplify this in the event that you need to absolutely destroy a human opponent's key now as for the stats for this build obviously we are a higher level than the last one that's just the nature of the beast but we have taken less of a focus on uh, constitution heart and courage instead we're going to aim to maximize both stamina and strength ramping those both up to 99, dexterity to seven, which will allow us uh, a quick change scroll along with two tiger running scrolls, magic at 10, that will allow us three weakness along with five barrier talismans. And then beyond that, I would suggest a distribution of however you're comfortable between courage, heart, and constitution. I went with 20 courage, 31 in heart, and 30 constitution. Uh, any other points I get here on out, I'll probably dump into heart to further scale that. Now. One thing that's interesting is with taking our weapon all the way up to 99, it's actually going to be beneficial to dual remodel a weapon. Now to show what I'm talking about here, when we go to remodeling, you know, this is, we would have been at 1913 with either a focus on strength or a focus on stamina. But if you hit triangle on one to select it and then go down to the other, you can see we're going to go up to A minus on both. And since both stats are at 99, it's going to pull that damage up even further. So this is going to make our Dachi hit as hard as possible. Whereas if we went for something like this, a, uh, a heart-based build, you'll see we'll only hit B and A minus. We're getting that double A minus with both strength and stamina. So this is gonna really, really push the Odachi to the potential limits of its damage. Now, putting this set together is actually going to be pretty easy because we can farm the smithing text and all the parts for it right here in the submission, a formal match in the shadow region. So we're actually gonna beat this guy down just to show how ridiculous this is. As many of you know, Odachi is already a weapon designed to kill humans. We have a passive that actively boosts our damage against humans. So this just makes that even sillier. Now the basic gist of this build is gonna be simple. We are just going to drop out a barrier talisman. We're gonna pull out our ax and get up our rage buff. And then we're going to destroy whatever we want. Come on. absolutely savage it took one final blow and moonlit snow and he was dead and now just to give a good one-to-one -one comparison to show how much more brutal this is compared to our old odachi build we're gonna go fight ryumin again now, one thing I want to point out, obviously, this is going to hit harder because this Odachi is up at plus five. But even despite that, it wouldn't hit this much harder just going up to plus five. We are pulling some serious, serious damage potential from Rage. In fact, Rage is one of the strongest damage boosting moves in the game. Uh, when it comes to things that can boost your damage, the order of hierarchy would be Power Pill at the bottom, followed by Carnage Talisman, followed by Rage, the Axe unique skill. And as I mentioned, while you can use Rage to boost the damage of any weapon, there's going to be obvious synergy here because we're going to be able to take full advantage of the set and the stamina damage bonus. And then Odachi, even though it struggles with key, since we're doing a, uh, a skill-based focus, we're not going to be worried that much about this. But you could alternatively pick up the skill that's going to uh, reduce the total amount of key that stance dancing costs to make this even stronger.
whenever your men is down. I think the last time we fought him with the previous Udachi build, it took probably about a minute. That was like, what, a 30 second kill? This thing just, it does damage. Like, so, so much damage. Real fast, we're gonna jump into my favorite punching bag mission just to show what it does against lower tier bosses like that. It's it's honestly not even fair against stuff like this. Like out of all the things I've put together, I think this may this may have topped everything else I've done. And keep in mind, we haven't even mid-maxed our gear on this. If we were to uh, go like full tryhard on this and look at inheriting attack onto every piece of our gear, this damage would ramp up even further. Thing shreds final bosses, this thing shreds humans. Absolutely silly. We didn't even need to do, we just held down triangle and that guy died. Even taking advantage of the backstab bonus. We're just we're just standing right in front of this thing's face and literally just spamming moonlit snow and it's melting. Oh boy. Well that's gonna wrap up this one. Uh just to recap, as I mentioned, you can get the smithing text for this off of uh the final boss. Instead, if you don't want to do that, one thing I'd recommend is checking out the uh, either the Neo Discord or the Neo2 subreddit. A uh, big, big shout out to NDY Story for hooking me up with this sword. I have been farming the smithing text for this thing constantly and was not able to get it. So I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. So I hope that was right. I hope I didn't butcher that poor guy's name. But uh, he was kind enough to to drop one of these on his revenant for me to help get this build rolling. And I am really, really satisfied with how this thing turned out. It It just, it is absolutely brutal. So if you're an Adachi fan, get out there, try this out. Really easy to put together since we have a focus around the Obsidian set, which we obviously only have one guy that we need to farm to get all the smithing texts for that, in addition to the axe. And once you have it all together, this thing, I mean, it, it just, well, you know, I think the performance it had speaks for itself. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time with an all-new build.